This is a mini lecture on monasticism, the origins of monasticism. Um, you may be familiar with, with monks, you may be familiar with uh, the idea and the practice of monasticism. You may have been to a monastery, um, there are a number of them still in Northern Europe. There are a number of them here in the UK as well. Uh, when we get to the Reformation lecture, you'll learn that many of these uh, religious places were destroyed um, and, or, or were abandoned, particularly in German in Germany and in, uh, in England. So what were the origins of monasticism? Well, the word mon uh, monk comes from the Greek word monokos, which means a single solitary uh, person. Uh, we use the English word monk for that. Um, another way of understanding this is uh, the word is eremitic. So we, from eremitic, we get the word hermit, which is one who lives in seclusion. So a monk who ha is someone who is a single solitary person, a special person who lives in uh, seclusion. We're on uh, slide 96 if you want to have a look. A key scripture passage for the origins of monasticism is in Luke chapter 18, which says, this is Jesus talking to the rich young ruler, and he says, there's still one thing you haven't done. Sell all your possessions, give the money to the poor, and you will have treasure in heaven. Then come and follow me. Now, when the rich young ruler heard this, he went away sad because he was very wealthy, we're told, and, and he couldn't do that. But for a person called Antony, this really struck a chord with him. He was from a privileged family in Egypt, and he had plenty of money. He had everything going for him. And he reads this passage, and it says to him, Am I willing to give up everything? And he did. He gave up everything. And he went to live a solitary life. And he becomes the father of uh, Eremitic monasticism, which is a single solitary person living in the desert to commune with God. We'll talk about Cenobitic, which is communal monasticism in a moment, the one you're probably more familiar with. We're in Egypt, St. Antony, if you click through the slides a little bit. And St. Antony uh, went out into the desert and he found a, a cave to live by himself and the whole point of this was so that he could get closer to God um, to get rid of the world it was a reaction to um, the world based in how he understood scripture so in order to live faithfully to God I need to remove myself from the sinful city and so he does this well people um, learn about this weird person living out in the desert and so they go and try to uh, learn from him and so he retreats further into the desert um, he talks about having battles with demons and having uh, to pray and to um, do ascetic practices so he would deny himself things of pleasure like nice food and nice drink. He would only drink water. He would only drink unlimited bread, you know, things like this. And um, anyway, as time went on, people started to uh, find him or continue to, to find him wherever he would go. And ultimately, he did share a little bit about his life with other people. A particular person called Athanasius, who was a bishop uh, from Alexandria, um, came to see what was going on in the desert. By this time, there were a number of solitary people out in the desert. And he met St. Anthony and learned about his story and actually wrote it down. And the reason that we know about St. Anthony is because Athanasius wrote his story down. Um, there's another... Let me get to this one, Pacomius. So the other form of monasticism is communal monasticism. And we can attribute the earliest form of communal monasticism to a character called Pacomius. Pacomius also was a well-to-do, wealthy person. He was in the military, the Roman military. And when he read this passage, it struck him. And he said, you know what, I need to give up everything. Um, he, even, <laughs> he even gave up his inheritance that his sister was entitled to. He did to make sure she was okay but he did give away all of their money. And he gathered a collection of these people together and wrote down a simple way of living, um, which was ordered, structured, had discipline, you know, like a military operation. And it was through these types of practices that these monks were learning how to become better Christians, uh, both in community and as individuals. Now, monasticism grows and spreads, and we will talk a little bit about this in the medieval lecture. But that gives you the origins of individual hermetic or eremitic, which are hermits, monastics, 
uh, St. Antony, and then Pacomius, who we can attribute the earliest form of communal monasticism to. Um, in the desert of primarily Egypt and Syria, and we're in the fourth century. Monasticism 